What's up, everybody? This is Josh here with Basement Level Magic, and we are getting into our second match here with our... What deck is this? Grixis. Grixis Dragons. Um, we'll keep this. We're on the draw. We've already got some lands we can play. I gotta tell you, I do not want to play against another Esper deck. That is too long for, for a guy like me. I'm used to either winning or losing in the first 20 minutes. But it looks like maybe we're in for it again. Yuck. Um, I'm gonna do the Smoldering Marsh because I want to make sure that I can cast Read the Bones on turn 3. Um, otherwise, we could just get a mountain now. Yeah, I, I want to make sure. <laughs> and then, of course, I get a swamp. So let's just do the swamp. We'll go ahead and see. I guess if we can hide that, we're playing blue for a... At least a turn, why not? If we're playing against Esper, um, you know, I'm definitely... Okay, so it is not Esper, thank goodness. I can't go for another 55-minute match. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and cast Read the Bones here. I mean, the other option is we could go ahead and hold off and just hold up uh, Draconic Roar. But I think right now with him having nothing on the board against us, let's go ahead and read the bones, see what we can get. Um, so far, we don't know what we're playing against. I haven't seen many obs on control. Most of them are aggro slash mid-range style. Um, but the rest is definitely... Both of these cards are very good for us. I think the murderous cut is probably going to be more important to us, though. Um, because if you watch the deck tech, I was describing that, you know, the larger creatures are kind of difficult for this deck to deal with. You know, you're not killing a Siege Rhino or a Anafenza with a Draconic Roar. Um, I, think, I think we could probably get rid of the Radiant Flames here. That was kind of a... Yeah, let's get rid of Radiant Flames. I want to keep Dr Draconic Roar. I think there's a higher likelihood of that uh, mattering than the Radiant Flames so far. Both the fact that it's at instant speed, plus it does uh, 3 damage no matter what, and it's going to do 3 damage to the opponent. There's Anafenza. And I'm just going to go ahead and get a, uh, I think I need the Smoldering Marsh more importantly. Um, I could play out the Thunderbreak region if I wanted to, but I think I'm actually going to kill his Anafenza. Get rid of Radiant Flames. And we're just one shy of playing Tassiger. I probably could have left one more uh, spell in the yard, considering at best we are only going to be able to play Draconic Roar. Definitely something I probably should have done there. All 
All right, so let's go ahead and use Draconic Roar right now. Show him the Regent. And then I'll play my Thunder Break Regent out. I'm not going to crack that Polluted Delta until we're on our opponent's turn. Um, you know, nothing nothing has gained from it, nothing has lost really. <clears throat> Murder's cut. Yep. And I'm just going to crack this. That way, I'll just do the F6. Or my equivalent of it. Generally, I think I'm too lazy to reach up to the keyboard, so I like to just sit back and use my mouse. Alright, shambling vent. That's... We, we can handle that. So here I think we'll be able to play out, so we've got, we would take four to play Thunderbreak Regent and then we could do two, yeah we could actually play Dig Through Time if we wanted to, but I think right now I'm just going to go for the threats. Actually, I I want to hold up Dig Through Time and see what our opponent does. Yeah, end of turn Dig Through Time is definitely what I'm shooting for here. All right, so Coligan's command will win it for us on the spot if uh, he doesn't have a instant speed removal spell. Yeah, so I'm gonna go for Coligan's command and duress. A fiery impulse is looking pretty pathetic right now. Ooh, I bet he uh, he wants to. He's gonna try to gain some life doing Jamoka's command. <laughs> I was not talking bad about fiery impulse. I swear. Actually, Jamoka's command doesn't do it. I don't know what the point of activating Shamley Vent there was. So I'm just going to go ahead and take care of his vent. Oh, actually that doesn't do it. Oh my gosh. That was silly. <laughs> and our opponent has nothing in hand. Yeah, that was, wow, that was dumb. I had forgotten that we uh, did dig through time and got rid of all of our stuff. I don't quite understand what the game plan was of our opponent there. But, I mean, to him, we probably look like we're really stupid as well. And, I mean, right now, he's got nothing. So he's just going off the top of his deck. I guess he was just doing Jermoka's command so that we couldn't take it. But if I would have just been smart and... Realize that just doing the Coligan's command would have won it the last turn. 
Either way, we still got it. All right, so we are going against Obzon here. Um, and I actually do want to bring in infinite, infinite Obliteration. I want to give it a try. Uh, no need for a Fiery Impulse. Uh, ultimate Price is not very good in this matchup. Virulent Plague is possibly good. We uh, did not see a Gideon, so it's difficult to say. Um, I think another Crux of Fate is fine. What are we at? 61. Uh, Silumgar's Command is decent. Draconic Roar, I think, is less good in this matchup. Um, you know, we didn't even see... Well, we just saw nothing. I would assume he plays, like, uh, Warden of the First Tree. I don't think Radiant Flames is where we want to be, though. All right, let's give this a try. You know, we didn't see really anything out of our opponent's deck, so it's difficult for us to know how to sideboard after only seeing Jamoka's Command and Anafenza. So this hand is definitely going to be a bit slow. Um, but I think it's one that we can make work. If I can hit the lands and try to get rid of get rid of his big creatures, I think we'll be okay. Uh, he is running warden. All right, and him just leveling up is is a decent sign for us. Yeah, if we can hit our lands, we'll be in a we'll be in a fine spot. Next turn, I'll be looking to play the Bloodstained Iron Swamp, picking up picking off his Anafenzas. Uh, this turn, we will be able to if he. You know, best case scenario, he plays it on Offenza, and we just uh, Selimgar scorn it. I mean, we are taking a good deal of damage here right away, though. So the only question is whether we take out Onofenza first or Siege Rhino. The fact that he didn't play Onofenza last turn with the mana up makes me want to take out Siege Rhino. This takes a while. So Siege Rhino... And he had one in his hand, so it's a good thing we did this. Uh, he is going to be playing a Gideon. I'm going to write these down. Gideon, Tassiger, Canopy Vista. Yeah, he's got a great hand right now. An Obzon Charm. So anything weird in his deck um, that we don't normally see? Not really. He's got... Three wingmate rocks, two hangerback walkers, playing a full four of Gideon. He's got some duress. Anafenza is the next card that I would like to take out. Play Tassiger. Ah. Yeah, him playing Gideon stinks a little bit.
Yeah, I think I gotta take out Anna Fenza. Um, Tasker is in his hand though, so I could easily see that being the right call. I just think Anna Fenza is the most worrisome of the bunch. It's a tough call. Yeah, actually, I should. I feel like I should probably take out the card that he has in his hand. This might be wrong. Um, Infinite Obliteration is a newer addition to the deck. So I haven't actually gotten to play it a lot. Alright, so he had one in his hand, one in the... Okay, so he's got a Gideon and Abzan Charm now. Yeah, so we're definitely going to take some damage here. Um, we do have Crux of Fate to kind of wipe the board. Unfortunately, Gideon is going to keep, keep pumping out. Actually, Gideon's just going to beat us right now. <laughs> yep, I was going to say, as long as he sees it, we're dead. And he does. Alright, so on to round three, or match three. Um, I think we could probably use another tasker of our own. Um, yeah, I still don't really want to bring in the Fiery Impulse or Radiant... I mean, Radiant Flames... Might be okay to have one of. It's just it, it kills only, you know, the, the tokens... Okay, speaking of which, let's bring in the token make token killer. Um, and I think Coligan's command can definitely come out. All right, let's see how this goes. I feel like this deck is close. Um, you know, we've, with this game number two, we will have taken on the two, uh, I think, I think the two bigger decks right now, um, Jeskai is still being played a lot, but if you're looking at the, uh, results, Esper and Obzon have actually been doing the best as far as top eights, uh, here over the last couple of weeks. I feel like they have really responded to the Jeskai Black and you know they figured out how to how to take that down. Me personally, I I just you know if I can help it, I don't want to have to play Obzon. Um, I have the cards on paper. I don't necessarily have them all online. And Obzon is just expensive. You know, so we're we're trying to find new ways. I mean, these this definitely is no budget deck either. Um, any land or any any deck that runs twelve lands is not a budget deck. Or twelve fetch lands. Um, but those are cards that we've had for a while. All right, we do want to be on the play. Uh yeah, we have to mull this. This is a keep. Um, we do have a scry. Hope to hit a land. At least we have an early removal spell. The warden of the first tree, just the continual damage that it was hitting us with there, um, seemed to be really difficult to come back from. Infinite Obliteration was great, but using two spells in a row to use it when he already had five power on the board was pretty difficult. Pretty difficult to deal with. Uh, 
All right, and that is a good sign for us. I'll probably just do a smoldering marsh because I want to have some red mana and then next turn I can grab a island with our polluted delta and start getting basics uh, because if he plays something I'll probably want to ruin his path it I guess we'll see what he does So we will grab an island. This way we've got double blue and double black. And we have our two wrath spells. Um, yeah, we just want to hit, keep hitting lands now. We do run 26 lands in this deck, so we're slightly heavy on lands. Um, but we do have a lot of fetch lands, so I feel like it kind of works itself out. Duress. What do you think? Dig through time or crux of fate? The fact that we have two crux of fates, I think he takes the dig through time. The unfortunate thing is he gets to see that we have nothing to do. That artwork on Duress is really cool. <clears throat> All right, so he does take the dig through time as I had thought. Um, this will just mean that he knows not to overcommit to the board. Uh, hanger back walker, okay. And we will just uh, kill the Hangerback Walker on our turn before he can get extra value out of it. Yeah, with him seeing we missed our land drops, it basically gives him free reign to just go ahead and start playing, start playing rhinos. That is very unfortunate right there. Gross. This is ah, uh, this is magic for you, man. This is game over. We missed our lands. I mean, we could, you know, if he plays something, we could just go ahead and Silumgar score it to show that we have something. But we're dead. Damn, Obzon. All right. Moving on. All right, thanks guys for watching. This is Josh here with Basement Level Magic. Hope you enjoy this. This is our Grixis Dragons list. Um, so far, not so good, but I still like it. I don't know why. All right, thanks guys.